a West Wing change amid reports John Bolton disagreed with the president's plans to hold talks with the Taliban at Camp David. President Trump announced the big move with Bolton on Twitter. Here's that tweet. I informed John Bolton last night that his services are no longer needed at the White House. I disagreed strongly with many of his suggestions, as did others in the administration, and therefore I asked John for his resignation, which was given to me this morning. I thank John very much for his service. I will be naming a new national security advisor next week. First reaction straight from the White House. Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley joins me now outside the White House. So, Hogan. What happened specifically to get to the point where John Bolton is out? Well, look, it's very clear that uh, John Bolton's policies and priorities did not align with President Trump's. And the President of the United States has the right to put people in positions uh, that agree uh, with executing the policies that he sees fit to protect this country. And, and also, last night, uh, the President of the United States asked John Bolton to tender his resignation. It was delivered to the President today. And why does John Bolton then come public with a different story? I'm, I'm certain you're probably hearing about the tweet where he says no, he and the President had talked, and that if anything happened, he resigned on his own. Listen, I'm not going to get into the back and, and forth here, but the fact remains that the president did ask for John Bolton's resignation. It was delivered today, and uh, we're in the process of looking for a new uh, director. Hogan, what can you tell me about uh, the kind of the, the way that the president does business in terms of telegraphing to the world? Look, I'll sit down with anybody to get a deal. He wants to end uh, our presence as much as it is with thousands of troops in Afghanistan, was willing to sit down with Taliban leadership. Bolton and others disagreed with that. Some Republicans have been very vocal in the last 24 hours about the cancellation and, and that it's a good thing that the meeting isn't happening, but they didn't like the fact that it was happening at all. Um, what do you say about the president's mode of how he does business in that sense and those people advising him? Well, listen, whether it's building a wall, whether it's a bilateral trade deal with Japan that's record setting, uh, whether it's getting out of the JCPOA, the horrible Iran deal, uh, you know, whatever he wants to do, building a wall, for example. Only in Washington, D.C., would it be an anomaly that someone runs on issues, gets elected on those issues, and then works to carry out those issues. Only in D.C. would it surprise people. This president is moving fast and furious to protect the people of this country uh, at our southern border. He also wants to create trade deals around the globe that protect American workers, American farmers and ranchers, American businesses, and American industries. Only here in Washington is that shocking. Was it not helpful to have someone whose reputation would tell you that he was very hawkish on things? The president joked at one point uh, that, you know, John Bolton just wants to go to war. Now, listen, the president wants people to disagree with him and have debate in front of him. But the president of the United States, he's the one who sets the policies. And once he makes the decisions, we come out and tell the American people what that decision is. And I can guarantee you this, whatever Donald Trump does, it's in the best interests of the American people. You've seen that time and time again, no further than the economy, for example, seeing record highs that we never thought possible under Barack Obama. But the president sets the agenda and, and we just said, uh, work our best here at the White House and the communication shop to deliver that message directly to the American people. Uh, Hogan, General McMaster, General Flynn, Ambassador John Bolton, all out. So number four is coming for the National Security Advisor. What is the president looking for in that position? Well, again, he wants someone who, who can carry out his agenda. He ran on getting out of some of these wars that we've been in for decades. We've lost uh, countless lives, uh, all types of money that can't even be tracked in some instances. And it's, it's, it's really disgusting how we've gotten this far. But the president also wants to protect our interests across the globe and protect United States citizens abroad. He will do that at all costs. That's what we're looking for. But I don't have the announcement, obviously, at this sure. time, as this is something that just occurred. Sure. And, and we understand that the timing would be about next week from the president's tweet. Um, what is happening inside the White House right now, getting ready for some of the things that are coming down the pike? Because on September 17th through the 30th of this month, the U.N. General Assembly, a, a huge gathering of world leaders coming to New York City. The president, I would assume, getting set to make his address and working on that right now. You need somebody who's up to speed. And just today, 
the ambassador to the U.N., our new ambassador, welcomed in her position. Right. Well, we have lots of people who want this position. I can guarantee you that. But the president's prepared for all inevitabilities. And today, for example, we have some information, uh, uh, some breaking news for you here on your, on your broadcast. The fact that Secretary Mnuchin at the Treasury and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo are going to take the podium at, at 1.30 mm -hmm. and discuss some of, the actions, uh, some of the actions we're going to take, rather, abroad uh, to, you know, influence some of the malign behavior that's happening against our allies and partners, against the United States. We've got to change that behavior. The the president wants to have conversations with people who, um, you know, are, are bad actors across the globe, uh, but he's not going to sacrifice uh, any of the American principles to do that. He wants their behavior to change. Uh, we've put record-setting sanctions on all types of malign actors, up to and including Iran, Russia, and others. Uh, and you're going to see more of that today because the president wants a change in behavior. There are so many burgeoning economies across the globe, whether it be North Korea, whether it be Iran, but they have to change their behavior and the. The president has good relationships, for example, with, with uh, Chairman Kim, but we've got to have them come to the table and stop what they're doing in order to get the benefits of what they could potentially be. Now, all right, Hogan, I'm going to slow you down for a second because I want to get the news that you said is breaking at 1.30 p.m. Give it to me one more time. News well, I'm conference. not going to get it. Yeah, I don't want to get ahead of the specifics okay. uh, of, the, of the press conference, but they're going to make an announcement here in just a little bit. Okay. At, 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 from the White House briefing room. Okay. Thank you. No, I, I'm taking notes on that. I, I want to get to this. Uh, we are hearing now from some of the members on the Hill in response, and the latest of that is Rand Paul. Let me get to that. Uh, Dr. Rand Paul is now also holding media availability to talk about this. He is applauding the removal of John Bolton. What kind of reaction are you getting at the White House from Capitol Hill? So this just coming in from Senator Paul. Well, I've not seen any. Quite frankly, this news just broke, and I came out to talk to you. So uh, I'm not sure. But look, there'll be people on both sides of this. The opinions will be made well known. The fact is the president makes these decisions. We all serve at his pleasure, and, and we're moving forward. All right. Uh, some of what's being reported today, as you know, Hogan, has to do with that Taliban leadership meeting that would have happened at Camp David on the very week of 9-11's commemoration and the frustration among some Republicans, Adam Kinzinger and uh, Congressman Michael Waltz of Florida, some being very vocal about the fact that that shouldn't have happened, um, and now it is not going to. What is the president saying about that meeting, uh, the very latest from him? Well, listen, uh, he, he's made his, his thoughts known on this. Uh, he wants to meet with people to try and change their behavior. The fact is, we haven't uh, negotiated with our hands tied behind our back here. We had a thousand deaths over there because of the troop engagement that this president, uh, uh, that this president uh, authorized. And, and we're fighting uh, the, the malign behavior and the, the bad actors across the globe. And in this instance, it's no different. But the fact is, some of these folks can change their behavior and, and actually uh, fix Fix what's going on in their nations. That's what we're trying to help them do. But the president also saw that there was no need to have a conversation, and now the negotiations are dead. And like I said before, we're moving forward uh, in other areas. All right. I, I want to move on, if we can, um, because there's been some rare pushback from the CIA over a CNN report claiming that the agency pulled a U.S. spy out of Russia because President Trump risked exposing that person's identity. The CIA is describing that report as, quote, misguided and simply false. And White House reaction is what, Hogan? You, you hit it right on the head. The CIA is an intelligence agency that rarely goes on the record. But this report from CNN was so wrong, it felt compelled to come out and call it misguided and false. And I have to tell you, for the media, the hypocrisy they have is so egregious to come out and try and say that this president is putting lives at danger with the way he handles uh, information, classified or not, when they are the ones that actually go to this person's house with a video camera, revealing where this person lives, potentially their identity and that of their family. This is so dangerous. And time and time again, the media faces a choice. They can use anonymous sources that may or may not exist to write stories that are full of innuendo and rumor, or they can take the advice the on-the-record statements, rather, from an intelligence agency or the White House. This happens time and time again. And I find it quite ironic that the media maligns this president and said he should listen to his intelligence agencies. And then when that very intelligence agency goes on the record, they ignore it 
completely to push their own radical agenda of taking down this administration and attacking this president. It's dangerous and it's putting lives in, at risk. Is there, um, is there a divide between this White House and its intelligence agencies? No. The president listens to all the relevant players every time the decision has to be made, but he's the one who ultimately makes the decision. And let's not forget, he's beholden to one group in this country, and that is the American voter who put him in office. He has come through and succeeded and won on issue after issue time and time again. This is no different. So when he runs on an issue, gets elected on that issue, he's going to do everything in his power to implement that issue, to protect the American people, to grow our economy, to become a, a global power economically, and he's done that to this point, and will continue doing so as we close out the first part of this term. Hogan, uh, you said at 1.30 p.m., so coming up in less than 20 minutes, news conference there in the White House press briefing. In fact, we're told that Ambassador John Bolton was supposed to be at that meeting. He's lost his job. He's going to be replaced. Secretaries Pompeo and Mnuchin are expected to be at that news conference in just a few minutes. Will we hear directly from the President of the United States as he has gotten rid of his national security advisor today? Well, you heard from him directly on Twitter, uh, and that's as far as I'm, I'm prepared to say he's going to talk today. There be more, may be more press engagements, but right now the 130 briefing is for a different matter and a different topic, and we'll move forward that way. Hogan Gidley, generous with your time and answering all of my questions as the news is breaking from both of us today. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.